Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we are live on the Passive Cash Flow Podcast. Hopefully, everyone's had a nice week, a productive week, and hopefully, we have been able to get those goals done. We're going to talk about setting our goals today, setting our goals, achieving our goals, and we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on right now with the market and all the challenges we have. And uh, this is Aaron Fragnito with the Passive Cash Flow Podcast. I am your host. I am also co owner of People's Capital Group. And we are live here on the uh, internet. We are on Facebook. We are on YouTube. And actually, I'm uh, waiting to be approved to be a live host on LinkedIn. So that's our next chapter we'll be on. Now, one of the challenges with having live podcasts is sometimes our, our guests have to reschedule. So in this case, we did have a guest that needs to reschedule, but I'm going to talk about setting goals and achieving those goals uh, anyway. We're going to talk about the goals that we had, uh, the topics we put out uh, for our live podcast today. Um, and I can talk about it, of course, as a small business owner, those uh, goals that we've set through those times, and those have changed. You know, I mean, we all had goals in January and February and March, and they all basically changed a lot, you know, and you had to adapt those goals. And But at the same time, what I've learned is that some of those goals were maybe wrong and not the right direction for me or for my business. And um, some of the things I was doing as a business owner were um, spinning wheels, you know, um, high RPMs and stuck in second gear, right? I'm sure as a small business owner or anyone working, you know, it feels that way sometimes, especially in the pressure cooker of uh, America here. And our, our job is to perform and, and, and get results and bottom lines. So, you know, it, it's definitely um, interesting now that we've had the pandemic come. What I've realized as a small business owner is that um, there's so much opportunity out there on the internet, on social media, uh, doing things like going live, podcasts, you know, and, and uh, your website, your videos, your YouTube, your content, that is your storefront now, right? I mean, it depends what you're selling. You know, if you have a local pizzeria, fine, that's your storefront. But for the most part, your website, your social media content, um, what, what you put out to the world on, you know, on, on your LinkedIn page, whatever it is, um, if that is your storefront now. And uh, even if you're not running a business, that's still your storefront. You know, it's for your family, right? Or your friends, or if you're trying to get a, a spouse, right? That's kind of where a lot of this all starts. And it's, it's social media, it's online, it's whatever your web presence is. And um, I recognized as a small business owner that there was a lot more I could be doing to improve my social media presence, my quality of online marketing. Um, and, and I really wasn't focused on it, right? I was going around to different events, uh, doing a lot of networking in person. And that's great. I just went to an event last night, had a great time. Bit of a small turnout, I have to say. I think that people are still hesitant to get back out there. So uh, I have another networking event I'm going to tonight down the shore. And I think that one's going to be a little more popular and more, more packed. So a little slow on the networking right now. But, you know, before this pandemic, I feel like I was in a, in a prehistoric type of business model, going out to events, you know, meeting people in person, you know, it was primarily how I, I did what my job is, which is to invest in relations, meet new investors, build rapport, and uh, raise capital for new properties that we're buying, new apartment buildings that we buy. I'm in charge of investor relationships. I'm in charge of fundraising. So what I realized is that I was doing something kind of the old fashioned way. And this pandemic forced me to turn my entire business on its head instead of doing in-office events three or four times a month. Now I'm doing webinars three or four times a month, which basically replicate those in my office events, what I'm realizing is, wow, now I can reach people in Texas or California or Florida. You know, a lot of our investors, we just had an investor from Texas, which is phenomenal. We have a lot of out-of-state investors now recognizing us, finding us online, uh, being pleased with our social media presence and our storefront, which is our website, our content, this stuff we're doing right now, right? This is our storefront. This is, you know, if you're trying to put a brand to the world, this is it. And, and it's tough because it's everything you do. It's every word you say. You know, it's a, a post me and not like everything gets heard by everyone, but at the same time, right, they say a reputation can take 20 years to build and 20 minutes to knock down. Um, so, you know, you have to be careful what you say, what you do out there. But at the same time, I realized that there was a whole untapped world out there with more social media marketing, you know, more online presence. And I was able to actually make my business stronger and raise more capital and connect with more investors online by improving my social media presence, by improving my website, by improving the sales funnel, the process of what, you know, how people uh, 
react to us online, the, the content they have, uh, the process of signing up for a webinar, the process of downloading our ebook. Um, these things have to be easy. They have to be sexy. People want to click on these things. They want to be fun. They have to get your attention, right? Like social media marketing is, it's everything. You have to like be informative, but professional, but also like, you know, crazy enough to get them to click on, on you, right? So marketing is funny, you know, uh, you really have to find that balance. Um, but I think in the last few months, we've really hit our stride with that. And right now what we've created is a nice system where I can turn up my social media marketing and that allows us to connect with more individuals. So in the last two weeks, we've raised $400,000, uh, which is great uh, for moving forward on this uh, property we're purchasing uh, in uh, towards the end of the summer here in uh, Patterson. So really exciting stuff going on at People's Capital Group. Uh, we're able to actually come out of this pandemic stronger than before. And uh, it's, you know, obviously we want to make sure uh, this pandemic gets, uh, you know, fixed. We want everyone to be healthy and happy. But at the same time, um, you know, I read an article about how Robert De Niro is out of money, you know, and I'm just like laughing to myself. Robert De Niro is running out of money. Like really, like, come on people. We need to, you know, money is fleeting. Money should be used to make more money. That's what money is. Money's a tool. You know, and we're not taught that in college. We're not taught that in high school. We're not taught that in grade school. I'm not even sure if people are taught in college these days, but I'm not sure if it makes a lot of sense. But right now, um, you know, I was never taught in college and I was an entrepreneur major, but I was never taught what money is. I learned what a franchise was. I learned what a debit and a credit was. I learned how to get up and work hard and show up on time, which is, you know, about 90% of success. So, you know, all those things are very, very important. I built social connections and I did learn a lot about business. I'm not saying my college degree was a waste of money, but I am saying that I didn't learn what money is in college. I didn't learn how to make more money with money. I learned how to manage people maybe out of a book. You really don't learn to manage people from a book, but, you know, I, I learned what management was, but, you know, it, it's interesting. I think that education has to be turned on its head. I, I think, you know, experience education is going to be the next big thing. I want to see a university come out and say, hey, listen, we're going to use half your tuition money to educate you. And then we're going to use the other half of your tuition money for you to go build your business. Right. And, and I would love to see that. I would love to see education improve because I have to say, <clears throat> being a small business owner for the last 10 years now, building my business from the ground up, um, coming out of college with an entrepreneurial degree, I recognize the gaps between higher education and the real world. And it's a huge gap that is hard to put together. It's very hard to run a successful business. We make plenty of mistakes. We make money, we lose money, but it makes us stronger, makes us better. And, um, you know, Seth and I are a great team. And, and I, I obviously wouldn't be here without Seth. But at the end of the day, I, I, mean, I think this whole pandemic is turning a lot of things on its head. You know, we're learning how to completely run our businesses online. That's a small thing we're kind of turning around. But in a bigger sense, education, I think, is changing. People are learning online, but also I think experience education uh, needs to be the next big thing where you actually do something to learn something. Because I don't know about you, but when I read something in a book, it's in and out. I, you know, I couldn't even tell you what calculus two is, but I passed it. For some reason, I had to take it, calculus two, you know, but here we are now running a business, I've never had to use calculus. Why did I have to take calculus too as a business major? So I really think education's outdated and there's a lot of things in this world. And that's why we see, you know, people in the streets policing. Yes, policing needs to be improved. You know, I mean, why is it so easy to become a police officer? You know, uh, maybe it should be a little harder to become a police officer. Maybe we should pay police officers a little more so you get better quality, you know, have more consistent training, right? So there's lots of things we need to improve in this world. And I get it, you know, people are, are pissed off and um, change does need to happen. And it is exciting right now. It's exciting. You know, I, I make small changes in my business, turn in-office events into online events. I've been able to double my fundraising. It was just a small example uh, there as a business owner, ways we can improve our business. And then by also just looking at your general life as well, you know, exercise, health, family. Uh, I've been able to spend more time with my lovely wife, Diana. It's been actually a blessing in disguise in some ways, being able to spend more time with your family. I've just spent a nice time with my family last night, you know, and, um, and that's really nice. So I've been spending more time with my family, more time with my wife. We kind of got our flow down, you know, so look at the silver lining and what's going on. We've learned how to 
improve our businesses in different ways. And if you haven't, then you know, really focus on that. Maybe it is time to double down the social media or double down that website or your YouTube content. You know, but that's kind of where it's at. I think YouTube is the next big thing. I think people are watching before they're reading. And um, you know, if, if your storefront, which is your online presence, you know, isn't up to date, isn't, isn't as best as it can be, then take this time to improve that. Um, and just, of course, if you're not a small business owner, it's a great time to spend more time with your family um, and then look at the world too and say, hey, why do we learn how to do things out of a book? Why don't we have options to actually participate? I don't mean an internship where you get people coffee. I want to see a real university where half the tuition is given back to the student to execute a business plan, right? The first two years, your tuition is put towards learning and creating a business plan with business experts who actually operate businesses, right? I realized most of my professors never ran a business and they're telling me how to run a business, right? It really bothered me. Another thing was, um, you know, so that's, it's a great idea. And I want, I want to see people put more pressure on education, uh, just like we're putting pressure on to reform the police. I think it all starts with education. We need to reform education, reform the police. Let's improve our, the systems we have in place. Let's not burn all down. Let's improve what we have in place. And I think that's the right way forward at this time. And, and, and we're seeing that happen in our society. Very exciting time. Uh, big change is happening. I'm told we're living through a historic time. So very exciting stuff here. Let's keep our heads up. Let's be positive. I'm Aaron Fragnito with People's Capital Group. Unfortunately, our guests couldn't join us today, but that's all right. I'm still able to talk a little bit about how we set some goals here in this pandemic and able to achieve them and turn our business and improve our business and pivot during these times. And um, I also got into a tangent on education because as you can see, I think education is outdated and I think a lot of people would agree with me. And I also think education is overpriced. So that's a whole nother podcast. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, message here. Um, be strong, keep on building that business, growing those goals, whatever they are, and uh, make sure that at the end of the day, you're just taking advantage of this time, right? I know some people, some friends I have that are like sleeping till four o'clock. I mean, they're friends, people I know, they're like sleeping till four o'clock and just like not doing anything, collecting unemployment. Like, you know, that that's gonna get old real quick. So I, I, I've gotta say, and there's also a bad habit. It's if you're, if you're sleeping till four o'clock and you're a grown man and, you're getting paid by the government. If you do that for too long, you're going to become something you don't like. So get out there, get back to work. You know, if you're collecting that unemployment, it's going to end soon. And uh, it's time to get back to work and focus on our goals. And that's what we're doing here at People's Capital Group. And I hope everyone enjoyed this message. Have a good day. 